The first WrestleMania set the stage for everything that was to follow. All the way around the world, now you know what it's all about, brother. Celebrities were out in full force, showing that this was the place to be. WrestleMania II pushed the boundaries, taking place in three different locations, New York, Chicago, and Los Angeles, delivering three huge main events. But it would be WrestleMania III in 1987 that truly displayed WrestleMania's full potential. And for our first match of the 2K24 Showcase of the Immortals, we go into the first verified WrestleMania classic, the legendary clash for the WWE Intercontinental Championship between champion, the macho man Randy Savage, and his challenger, Ricky the Dragon Steamboat. Intercontinental champion since February of 1986, Savage tore through anyone who challenged him. That included a successful defense against George the Animal Steel at WrestleMania II. A clash between Savage and Steamboat during a late 1986 edition of Superstars would see the Macho Man retain via countout, but that wasn't good enough. He would launch a vicious attack on the Dragon after the match, taking him out of action. Savage would attempt to duplicate the attack on Steamboat's friend and former opponent George Steele during the first Saturday night's main event of 1987. Fortunately for the animal, Ricky would make his well-timed return for the save, leading to the rematch between the two at WrestleMania. What transpired between the two combatants can only be described as art. A fast-paced, high-action classic unfolded in front of 90,000-plus in attendance, with both men coming so very close to victory on a number of occasions. Would Savage be able to turn back the challenge of his angry opponent? Would Ricky Steamboat get revenge? These questions would be answered over the next 15 grueling minutes, and when it was over, everyone in attendance and those watching at home knew they had been a part of something special. The two superstars would forever be etched in history following the match, with Ricky Steamboat finally putting an end to the Macho Man's historic reign. from the moment the bell rang, and these two didn't give each other a second to rest. Ricky Steamboat fighting to avenge a career jeopardizing attack months earlier by not only defeating Savage in the ring, but also ending his reign as Intercontinental Champion. The aggression was almost uncharacteristic from Steamboat. Was Steamboat too angry? And would that lead him to making a costly mistake? Was Steamboat too focused on hurting Savage and not on winning the match? Had the Dragon taken enough time to recover in the first place, or had he rushed back in the hopes of humiliating the Macho Man under WrestleMania's bright lights? Surely the presence of Miss Elizabeth's not-so-secret admirer, George the Animal Steel, was going to be a distraction to the Macho Man, who looked to keep Steel away from his manager at all times. Could Savage shut all that out and lock in on his challenger? Despite the external factors, these two appeared to be firing on all cylinders once they settled in. There was a real sense that this match could be, and was going to be, something special. The fans were captivated by the constant back and forth battle, with no one really able to maintain any type of control in the early portion of the match. The Macho Man appeared almost thankful to get a moment to himself after dumping Steamboat back to the floor, letting you know that Savage understood he was in a fight unlike any other he'd been in before. Things were only getting started.
The Macho Man was trying everything, and that included fighting dirty. But Steamboat continued to have an answer at every turn. Steamboat's counter-wrestling had smothered Savage's offense, and the building frustration was obvious on the face of the Macho Man. In a match this closely contested, one small mistake can be a game-changer. And Savage's frustration led to him making a big one, charging at Steamboat only to be backdropped to the floor. Steamboat finally had a huge opportunity to pour on the pressure and put Savage away.
Once the referee went down, there was a real sense of panic. Savage quickly hits his flying elbow, but obviously there was no official to count. The Dragon was grounded for now, but there was no way Savage had already put his fire out. After all the two had gone through, how was it going to end? Looking to take advantage of the situation, the Macho Man looked to use the ring bell on the fallen dragon, only to be intercepted by George the Animal Steel. Macho Man, choosing to retaliate against Steel instead of getting back to Steamboat, ultimately ends up being the decision that costs him. A then-record Intercontinental Championship reign comes to a bitter end for Savage, who wasn't thrilled about the manner in which he lost. And Steamboat's counter-wrestling remains the key to this match, once again getting him out of trouble and earning him the victory. Hard to feel bad about a guy who tried to use the ring belt twice. This match, over 35 years Here's later, is still a certified the classic. The athleticism is incredible. Continental Champion, Ricky the Dream. Long tortured by Randy Savage, both the Dragon and the Animal's elation is easy to see as they're carted back to the locker room. Put this match on a loop and I'd never get bored. I love Steamboat versus Savage. 